Welcome back, Visions fans. Ready Player Will here. Happy third anniversary. And Sephiroth coming out this week. Obviously, most of you have already built him and are using him and have watched videos on him. So I'm going to do my best here to highlight some things that you may not have seen so far. Still give my personal thoughts on what I think of certain attributes. But without further ado, let's jump into things. So today's presentation, the character overview and the base and total stat analysis leading up to the report card where I kind of highlight and grade those stats in the context of his kit. Class of job overview and a few other things leading up to my general thoughts and then getting into the optimization overall. So character overview, obviously brand new dark unit. They've given him the hero, soldier, and pugula subjobs. He equips katanas, hats, cloth, and accessories with a move of three, jump of one as a 100 cost unit. Now, when you give him the dream upgrade, you do affect some of the resistances here. So I have that reflected, but overall 25% resistance to pierce, 25% to missile, 15% to slash, all super strong for the three most popular attack types in the game. Mine is 5% to strike, not terribly worrisome there, but 0% to magic, also something you do need to look out for. But overall, very strong starting resistances, and from an ailment perspective, he is a 50 faith unit, so you do not have to worry terribly about this, but 50% to charm and 50% to paralysis. Charm obviously is very popular and it's a doozy when you get hit with. 10% for frostbite though, also not a bad one, just because he's so good at his AP management that we'll see here that being able to stop frostbite, which kills all your AP management, is a good thing for him to have. Now we look at base stats overall, which is where things like vision cards and equipment scale off of. Base HP is a very strong here, particularly for damage dealers. He is amongst some of the highest in the game. So anything that scales off HP, he will greatly benefit from. From an attack perspective, also top of the charts, not the highest, but definitely competitive with the top of the charts, not something to be lacking at all. Not a weakness in the least. From an agility perspective, he's relatively average, 57 agility overall. From a dexterity perspective, also skews just slightly higher here, and for luck, just slightly lower, but overall, no glaring weaknesses from a base stat perspective. Now, as we kind of translate those five charts into this single graph, again, re-emphasizing what we just saw, the attack stat is among some of the highest, the HP is as well, but when we add in the board nodes, the board stats, mastery stats, things of that nature, a few things change here, some worse, some better, but overall still no glaring weaknesses. His HP is still among some of the best in the game. The attack does take a step back, we'll see why in just a second. Agility is still relatively average and dexterity and luck just slightly lower, but overall, if you're looking at the sources of where those stats come from, one of the things they do for him is that the board node they give him is a 15% HP board node. Most damage dealers get either an attack or a magic stat. He's not one of those characters. So that's one of the reasons why he gets that significant amount of bulk and kind of takes a step back from an attack perspective. But that is not the end of the story for attack. He obviously can get very high for attack still. We'll talk about that more. Now, crit hit and crit avoid. Although he does kind of take a step back from a dexterity perspective, which is what your crit hit rate directly scales off of, he does have 20 crit hit rate on his mastery ability. So he does recover a little bit, still ends up being on the higher side of things. You can definitely give him some love there though to ensure the critical hits. And crit avoid, which scales entirely off the luck stat, kind of similar to what we saw on the chart, a little bit below average. So he will probably take more critical hits on average than most units but not the end of the world now accuracy wise this blue line is if you're not equipping any accuracy passives he is roughly average to below average it looks a lot worse than it is comparatively here but not an accurate unit don't think of him that way and the passive that gives him 20 accuracy not one that you'll commonly have on which is why you see him higher here on the green line which is total character accuracy with passives overall don't think of him as an accurate unit, but that's not the end of the story. He's got some things to make up for it, which we'll see in the report card. Now, as an evade unit, definitely nothing there. He's not an evade unit in the least. Don't even attempt it. And finally, in summation, we get to our report card. So overall effective HP, and again, this takes your health pool into account, but also looks at things like defense, spirit, and your resistances to kind of make it a real number. And essentially becomes how much damage do you have to do to kill him rather than what's the actual physical HP number. So effective HP... A plus. He is amongst the best in the game, second only to Thancred in that regard. He's got 20% elemental resistance on his passive, which is bonkers good. He does have a self barrier, no innate defense or spirit, and no AoE or unit resistance. Definitely best against physical damage as we saw, but even the magic effective HP is still exceptionally high, despite the fact that he has the 0% magic resistance, it's because his health pool is so high. That even though he doesn't have that innate resistance, compared to other characters, his health is still way higher than what they typically are, just based off the health number alone. Now, primary stat 
that, also giving him an A. Great base attack. The self-sacrifice passive really jacks up his attack stat. He's got extra damage from the scintilla counter ability, which we'll see. 50 defense penetration on the passive, 20 slash res pen on the mastery. Overall, primary stat will be in the 15 to 1700s, depending upon what you do for vision cards. But overall, very strong attack stat. Agility, I am going with a C plus here. So the UR average with vision cards of so 15% and 8% is 80. When you have his passive on that gives him agility, he'll be slightly above that, 83 agility versus the 80. If you unequip it though, you drop him to 77 or 78. So he's slightly below that average. Either way, not terribly fast, not terribly slow. You have a few ways to build him. Going with a C plus though, just rounding up here for that extra agility. Now accuracy, also going C plus here, it's probably more like a C, but he does have three forms of guaranteed hit. One on the main job, one on the sub job, and his limit break. So all is not lost. He does have ways to hit evade units, which is obviously good news for many. From an evasion perspective, giving him a D, not an evade unit at all. Movement though, I am going with a B because his agility passive also has move plus one on it. So he does have some nice capability to flex his movement, which is helpful for certain maps. Passives, I'm going with an A plus here. Exceptional base passive that you'll have on all the time with other really good ones to complement it. From the counter perspective, also going A plus. He's got potentially two counter abilities, one of which is physical reflex. We'll talk about more of the second one in just a minute here. The overall kit, I'm going A plus here. Very straightforward, very easy to get value, great main job. It's one of the best things about him. For a final grade here of an A plus. Overall, exceptional character. I will say though, he is held back by the dark element, at least in the current state of the game, and his weapon being the katana. This is one of those times where, at least on the very top end of the game, Sephiroth is going to be good for a little while here, but quickly going to get left behind, not because of him, but because of the game balance overall. But that doesn't change the fact that he's an A-plus unit, and that for 95% of the player base, he's going to be exceptionally strong, particularly when you consider that many of you are still seeing light in the form of Starlight, Elena, or Jaden, and Sephiroth will absolutely shut Elena down, which is good news for many. Now we look at the passive abilities. Power of the Livestream is the one that really puts him at that A plus grade. It is the defense penetration of 50, which is above average high. Most people get 40. It's also the all element resistance of 20%. Now the second one that I like here best is either Lone Hero, that's the agility passive with the move one, or self-sacrifice. This is 300 to 350 extra attack stat. It's very good. The negative 3% to the resistances really isn't all that material, so it's safe to put on. I do think Warrior Spirit is still a good one here at the bottom in that he does have high HP, so you will get a lot of HP, and it's kind of a happy medium for the attack stat too, where it's not 60%, it's 24%, but overall, I'm probably just going Lone Hero or Self-Sacrifice in the majority of the times. Now, the counter abilities. Televasion, is the one you're always gonna have on. This is the physical reflex ability. The second counter ability, which I hinted at, we're gonna talk about in a second for the buffs. I wouldn't even consider these other counter abilities. Just shut the book, tell evasion, and call it a day. But on the main job buffs, so mass immune and waiting is his first primary buff priority. It's a teammate buff, and when you do it, you will gain access to that second counter ability, which is Scintilla. Talk more about that in a second. This mass immune and waiting will give light resistance of 20% to he and his teammate, increase the reaction block rate by 50% to he and the teammate, and grants that counter ability for three turns. Now this counter ability does have a decent diamond range. It's an 80% chance to proc preemptively. But it's typeless slash damage, so your dark attack up modifiers will not apply to it. But slash attack up certainly will. It's a nice way to potentially get some extra damage in there and maybe kill the enemy before they can hit you. Now the second buff priority here is his TMR technically, or really any TMR. And then third is the Veil of Woe, which is somewhat unfortunate, but there's some good and bad for how this priority is. This Veil of Woe is very good, but it's a 50% general barrier, also a 10% AP auto restore. So you have some options here when it comes to movement and buff priority order. If you want to prioritize the barrier or the TMR or the light resistance or scintilla as a counter ability, a lot of different options, but really no bad ones per se. Now we get to the main job offensive abilities. The Aeolian Onslaught, decent enough. It's just a little bit limited in what it has for range. It's two squares and it's direct, you know, line. It's 121% mod for decreased agility, 25%. That's fine, nothing crazy. Teleric Fury is a very noteworthy ability though in that number one, it's great for PvE. It's a triple hit, it's a slash, it's a defense break of 25. It's also 200% modifier. It's the highest modifier on the main job here. But again, a little bit limited in what you have for range here. It's three squares away directly in front of where you're standing. So great ability 
ability, but again, a little bit limited depending on the map. Hell's Gate is probably the one you'll see him use the most often. It's an exceptionally strong ability. Giant AoE here. It's a break general barrier for targets, which is awesome. Increases slash resistance penetration by 40% for three turns and 165% modifier. But Shadow Flare is also a very good ability in that it is typeless damage. So although it's still a dark type, so your dark attack modifiers will apply to it, being typeless means that it ignores whatever the enemy slash resistance is. Now, AoE resistance will still apply to this, but overall, it's the guaranteed hit chance. It's got some decent flexibility from a range perspective. Decreased CT of 25 for targets. Overall, another thumbs up ability. Now, when we get to the sub jobs, I think all of them have their time and place. I think Hero is probably my least favorite, but it's not necessarily a bad one. The thing that I do appreciate about this is Boundless Void, in that it is a single target ability, but you'll notice the range is a little bit more flexible than what he had to offer on the main jobs here. The unit attacks here in the main job are only three squares away and you have to be in a very specific you know, position to initiate them. Whereas Boundless Void is far more flexible in what it has for range. And I do like that when you consider Dark Fina has a unit imperiled down. This is a great ability to pair with that. Obviously the other ones are too, but you just have to be a little more in position to take advantage of them. Now my favorite sub job, probably the Soldier, if only because A, Paralyzing Edge, another guaranteed hit, and although the range of this might be similar to the top two, at least it's a diamond shape, so a little flexibility there. But Hazard Break is really the one that I appreciate because it's Dispel Protect, and it's 225% modifier. Sure, it costs a little bit of your HP, but overall, if you're seeing enemies with Protect, this is obviously a great way to neuter that entirely. And it's a significant amount of damage compared to what it can do on the main job from the modifier perspective. Now, my second favorite is the Pugula subjob. If only because I really, really like Demon Purger. 210% modifier, it gets stronger the more times you get hit, but it also absorbs 30% of the damage you do. So when you talk about him having some self-sustain, this is a great ability to do that. Although it is a little bit limited, only being one square away. But Spirit Breaker is not a bad one either. It's kind of the same idea here. Overall, some decent options. I prefer Soldier, but I think Puglis does have a good argument as well. Now we look at the limit break. This is an exceptionally good limit break. Everyone's super happy to see it. It's the same diamond and range and height as the Hell's Gate ability, but this dispels courage, dispels re-raise, it's a 100% hit chance, and decreases AP consumption of 40% for three turns. So when you're seeing those enemy Elenas that are kind of out in front, this is going to basically take them out in one shot and they have no way to protect against it with courage and re-raise so this is really the ability that shuts down that elena pretty quickly now we look at the mastery ability you know that slasher has pen of 20 we mentioned the crit rate of 20 it's nice nothing good nothing bad but overall solid that slash res pen of 20 is very important for something i'm going to talk about in a minute here but the dream ability definitely dream uh, activate him with the antler that pierce and missile resistance very powerful and that shadow flare upgrade is what makes it 100 hit chance so if you don't dream awaken him you will not have that extra 100% hit chance. So definitely do that. I would hold off on reincarnating if you're at the top end of the game, but for the general player base, if you intend on using Sephiroth all the time, go ahead, go not Sephiroth with it. Now we look at the TMR review. Uh, the ability here, it's a two-time usage. The ability itself, attack 30% and defense penetration at 20 is nice in that it's unique. I just don't know if this really works for Sephiroth in particular. A lot of the dark units skew a little heavier on magic on this you know, state of the game, so this doesn't really affect them at all. Even for Sephiroth, I don't think the extra 30% attack is a significant damage increase for him in the defense pen. He's already got enough of it. I'm not terribly worried about that. And it's a cloth, so you have to really consider whether or not it's worth uh, sacrificing a different cloth instead. Little niche. It's not bad. Not great. I'm ambivalent on it. Now, my general thoughts overall. So, A, incredible Anima Vision Card Synergy. This is going to give him near 100% slash res pen uptime for most of your fight. So the Anima Vision card, for those of you that need a refresher, 35% slash res pen. It's also 20 unit resistance, but if you add up those slash res pen, 35 from Anima, 10 from a trust stone passive, you're at 45, 20 from his mastery ability, you're at 65, and 40 from the Hell's Gate buff puts him at 105%. It's really 100%. So any amount of slash resistance that you have, he'll completely ignore all of it for three turns. Very, very, very powerful synergy there. Now, secondly here, he also has very good AP management between his barrier buff, which also gives him the 10% AP restore. Not to mention, that's 40 TP, 
which means he gets 20 AP from using it. So that's a ton of AP from one buff, the limit break effect that reduces the AP cost, and the mass immune weapon gives him starting AP as well, which is very, very powerful. We're going to talk about that in a couple slides here. Now, the scintilla counter ability, I will say, is slightly overrated. I actually thought that was going to be very impressive, being 80% proc rate. I obviously got like Skahal vibes immediately with the 50% that he has. But so far, it's a very good ability, but I haven't seen it really take over my fights like I thought it would. There's still enough characters that attack him from range where the scintilla won't proc. And because it's typeless damage, you do neuter a little bit of the damage output of it. But again, it is preemptive, so you can potentially kill people before they kill you. It's still exceptionally good, but not as oppressive as I thought it was going to be. Now, the effective HP, again, is staggeringly good. You can find ways to support his health pool. It'll yield huge results. So finding healers that can pocket him. If you have a character, like, I'm not recommending this, but Amnellus, who gives the character buff to self-heal HP below a certain percent. Regen abilities, abilities where you can self-absorb HP from certain TMRs. Overall, going to go a very long way for you. Slightly limited for his unit attack options, which we saw. So just be cognizant of that when you're picking your sub-jobs or using your AI priority. And then again, huge PvE potential, great investment for the majority of the player base to add him into what you bring for Dark Elemental Chains from a Slash perspective. Now that being said, there are a few ways to expose him. Although being an A+, he's not a perfect unit by any means. Number one, you could obviously lean into magic damage out of all the ways to attack him. That is the one that he is the most susceptible to. B, you could leverage healing on your own team. One of the things that he does not have is healing power down. So although he might do a lot of damage, if you can just replenish that damage, which is not impossible, he's going to have a hard time dealing with that mechanic overall. And we see a lot of tanks right now, like Warrior Light, uh, King Mont with their dream enhancements, Snow with the self-heal. All of them have this like self-heal ability before a certain percent, and Sephiroth can't really do anything with that. So that is very strong against him. You can also buff as much as you want because he's got no dispel in his kit. That's one of the things that through many metas, lots of characters have some form of dispel on the team. So your buffs, they don't get full impact because they just get thrown away. He can't do that though, and, and neither can many of the dark units you pair him with. So go ahead, buff as much as you want. It's going to be very, very powerful against he in particular. AoE resistance is disproportionately good for you, because again, you consider his limit break, demon's wall, the typeless dark attack. All of those things are AoE type attacks, and AoE resistance are characters that have it innately are going to generally fare better against him. And then also element typeless attacks when you're attacking him, like... Dark Fina's Comet ability does not have an element associated with it. So when you look at Sephiroth's elemental resistances, when you attack him with an ability that does not have an element associated with it, the element resistance means nothing. So sure, he can get 35 to 45% elemental resistance, but if you attack him with a elemental typeless attack, it's going to cleave right through all of that. And then finally, just being able to stack your own dark resistance. Obviously, he's got no imperils that can imperil dark resistance down. It's only the defense in peril. So just being able to add up that dark resistance will mitigate the amount of damage it can do for you. And you really can't get around it. That's the general thoughts. So now the job-based vision cards, this is again, one of the weaknesses for him in the long term. There's only two job-based vision cards for Katana. So as we see in the future, some of these elemental comps kind of welding over each other with these new 90 cost Esper and Vision cards that allow some of that dual element synergies, he doesn't really get that full benefit of what the Vision cards from a job pace perspective can also add to that. The Hero and Wish on a Winter Night are both good, but they are definitely sub Vision card abilities. So from that perspective, they're fine that they give some modifiers. The reaction block rate is very unique for the Hero card. That's obviously nice when you talk about like mirror matchups and preventing the enemy Sephiroth from reflexing and from using a Scintilla ability. But overall, nothing terribly oppressive here. Now for the Esper synergies, also very high level here. There's pretty straightforward what you want to focus on. Dark attack, human killer, attack percentage in general, slash attack, and magic resistance specifically. Odin and Chaos Odin are still the two best 100% of the time for all your physical damage dealers. Anima is very competitive though, because again, dark attack nodes there. I do like Omega as well for the magic resistance it offers, and same thing for Fenrir, that it has that slash attack nodes and the magic resistance. There is a special mention for Demon Wall for what it has for the dark and light resistance, where if you kind of see that in your matchups here, but obviously that's a little more specific to certain matchups, not everything. But overall, these five, pretty safe. And obviously there's others as well, but they're a little more situational. 
Now, finally, we get to the mass immune for the weapon optimization. This is by far and away the best weapon you can put on him. There is that very unique situation where maybe O's Katana and the TMR slot, if you really need to prioritize the slots one and two for certain kinds of equipment, but that is still not optimal most of the time. The benefits of this weapon are far too great in that A, critical rate of 15 and crit damage of 15. By having both of these here, definitely frees up some trust stone slots for you on the right side, where you can amplify other different attributes here. The initial AP of 20 is critically important for him in terms of getting him to just spam abilities with basically full uptime for a very long time. The slash attack 15 also very nice. And between either the assault or critical, I think both are good. I'd build one of each. This is running for 50 days. There's no reason why you can't farm enough recipes for both of them. The Assault is obviously the safe pick for the majority of people, but Critical certainly has its upsides too, where he does do a fair amount of crit damage overall. But that's the Sephiroth character review in a nutshell. Again, most of you have already used them. I don't think there's any glaring surprises that you've seen here, but I'm hoping that this is just some confirmations of things you've seen, maybe some points or highlights that you haven't thought about yet, and maybe just some general advice to help you optimize him and using him better in the long term, which for many of you is going to be a very long time. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll talk to you all soon.